Hey guys, Jay Anthony and welcome back to the channel. Now, before I start getting a whole bunch of hate comments, this is not going to be a video where I tell you guys that Todd Coyer is complete garbage. The purpose of this video is to explain why in the watch community, Todd Coyer has the reputation of being garbage. I get questions all the time about why we don't talk more about Todd Coyer and why there's so much hatred towards Todd Coyer in the watch community. And so I literally just wanted to put together this video to give you guys a sense as to my personal take as to why Todd Boyer has such a horrible reputation in the watch community. Again, this is not where I'm going to tell you why I think Todd Boyer is garbage. If you have a Todd Boyer, please don't take offense to this. This is me just trying to explain why I think the watch community doesn't like Todd Boyer. To be honest, some of the newer pieces are pretty nice and they have actually a pretty interesting history pre tog and so again, this isn't my evaluation of the brand in itself. This is me characterizing why the reputation is what it is. Now, before we get started, let's go ahead and do a customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing my 16710 pre-ceramic GMT Master Coke. Uh, this one's been sitting in the safe for quite a while and uh, I decided to pull it back out. And you know, I think it's good when you put a watch down for a long period of time because, I don't know it is with you guys, but you know, if I wear a watch consistently, you tend to get a little bored with it. And I haven't worn this watch in a couple months and picking it back up, I actually like it a lot more now than I remember. So maybe it's a second honeymoon for me. Anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get into this and let's just go kind of point by point by point of a couple key reasons that I think that the watch me just hates them. And the first one honestly is gonna be a really dumb point, but there is a factor of the cost of Talk Warrior. Um, for whatever reason, the watch community has a lot of status and cliches involved in it. And you get a lot of these people that come in the community that aren't real watch aficionados. They're more attached to the status of high-end watches. And because of that, and because Todd Coyer can play at the lower end of the market, with some of their uh, you know, F1 pieces going well below $1,000 and being quartz pieces, you know, they don't really have the status or the cachet that you would get from other brands such as Omega, Breitling, Rolex, etc. And so to be honest, as dumb as it sounds, there's a lot of hatred towards Todd Coyer strictly because they're quote unquote affordable. And again, for those in the watch community that are status conscious, I think that's one of the reasons that they hold it against the brand as they think they're too attainable, they're too common, they're too affordable, and thus they're not as desirable as some of these higher end brands. So on that note, another thing that really ties into that is, you know, not only is the cost, but their, their high availability and their branding. And what I mean by that is, I mean, of course, the Rolex is obviously easily available and attainable as well in terms of being able to locate it and shop for it. But Todd Quarry, you find not only at boutiques, you can find it in discount stores. It's not uncommon to walk into a Costco and see Todd Hoyers in there, the quartz ones for well under $1,000 on discount. It's not uncommon to see them on discount websites for very, very cheap. As a traveler like myself, it's not uncommon to go to duty free stores and see them. And that availability and that deep discounting culture, again, I think also erodes some of the credibility and the status of the brand, which for those that are into things being hard to get and having that expensive factor to them, which I'm not saying I'm an advocate of, I would say actually not an advocate of that, um, but that definitely think hurts their reputation and their branding too, they're, they're, they're everywhere. And for whatever reason, uh, psychologically, I think a lot of people like to feel like they're on the in and they like to have something that's a little bit special, that's not quite as common. They like to feel you know, like they, they got something a little bit unique about themselves. And so when they see a brand that's heavily advertised, that's everywhere, it's in every store, every deep discount chain, it kind of takes on a bit of a commonality. It feels like something common, something unremarkable and something overly affordable where people I think tend to undervalue the brand because of that. So for those reasons, now I'm gonna get into the reasons that I actually personally uh, resonate with the most as to why I think they have a bad reputation. And one of them is, for those of you that don't know, Todd Hoyer wasn't always Todd Hoyer. Todd Hoyer joined uh, two different brands together. Historically, there was a brand called Hoyer, which as you will find as you get deeper into the watch community has an enormous amount of credibility People love old Hoyer watches. Hoyer was very much synonymous with old car racing series. You know, much like people think of the Paul Newman Daytona, we also think of the Hoyer Monaco uh, and the Carrera series. There are just some historic pieces from Hoyer that have a lot of cachet. They have a lot of respect in the watch community. Even though, to be honest, some of those vintage pieces aren't all that special in common terms of what their components were. And actually, some of the old Monacos are very difficult to service. But those watches had a lot of respect. They had very classic, timeless designs, um, so much so that you actually see modern Todd Coyer bringing back some of these designs to try to recapture some of the old glory. 
And unfortunately, when Tag and Hoyer emerged, you saw them do a very different design language going forward. It was very kind of avant-garde, modernist. I don't even really know how to classify it. But with like the Curium series and the Link series, they went much more contemporary and they kind of abandoned a lot of their historic designs. And as you look at other watch brands out there, you know, Breitling with their Navitimer, Omega with their Speedmaster, Rolex, their Oyster line, they tend to have a very similar DNA or lineage to them where they kind of are consistent over time. You had this company Hoyer that got merged with Tog, became Tog Hoyer, and they threw out basically everything and went for this total contemporary vibe and they basically got very divisive. Um, people that liked the old school watches didn't really know what to make of the current watches. And the current watches, because they were so trendy, contemporary, kind of on fashion, they kind of became hot briefly and then very unhot shortly thereafter. And they haven't really aged well in my personal opinion, and I think a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with those. And again, it's because they really kind of walked away from their classic lineage and they went to something very different. Um, there's no mistaking what a, a 90s or 2000s talk lawyer looks like. They have a very consistent contemporary, I'm really struggling to explain their design language, but it is, it's very bespoke, it's very different. And if you love it, you love it. And Tog Hoyer has got the watch for you. If you're more of a classic traditionalist kind of person, probably infuriates you and you don't know what to make of them. They have a very divisive style to them. In my opinion, they're not made for a common audience. Although I, I will be honest, I do appreciate some of those pieces looks wise. I'm not trying to hate on them, but I'm saying if you look at other watch brands in that market, they've stayed historical, they've stayed trending to their themes and Tog Boyer kind of went off and did their own thing, which some people loved, some people hated. Now, my biggest issue with Tog Boyer was actually their quality. And this is actually the reason that I've avoided them so much um, is to be honest, and I apologize to anybody I'm gonna offend here, feel free to disagree. The watches Tog Warrior put out in the 80s, 90s, and for most of the 2000s were absolute garbage. Um, and I say this as I've had the ability to take apart several of them. Um, the bracelets were very low quality, stamped, pinned bracelets. The case backs were okay, but you took the case back off. They used really crappy plastic spacer or retainer rings in them to hold in generic low quality quartz movements, the most of them. Um, and the automatics were very low grade, most of the ones that I saw anyway, ETA movements, which are fine, but they were very low cost movements put together in very low quality cases with plastic pieces holding them in the case back. And to be honest, if I think I was able to take some people out of the know and I was to give them like an early 2000s fossil watch that cost $100 and would have given them a similar era Todd Hoyer watch and get, took the case back off and said, hey, took a look at the two and tell me which one cost more. I think a lot of them would be scratching their heads saying, I can't tell them apart. Uh, my personal opinion, Todd Hoyer's of the 90s and 2000s are equal quality to like a fossil watch. And because of that, I never took them seriously. Again, no offense to you. If you own one, feel free to disagree and I'm sure I'll get some hatred comments for that. But that's my personal opinion. I think the design out there is, like I said, I appreciate some of those pieces, but their quality was not on point. And I'm not gonna say that they were the only brand that suffered quality issues. I mean, Breitling put out some crappier pieces where the gold was flaking off of them. The whole Swiss watch industry in, in general had some rough years for some time, especially during the quartz revolution. A lot of the people making classic automatic, automatic and manual wine watches kind of got left out in the cold and had to figure stuff out. But that's, I think, the biggest reason um, from my perspective why they kind of lost their way and lost respect. And I think a lot of people in the watch community still hold that against them and I can understand that perspective. Now, going forward, I think they're on a pathway to actually setting things right. They got Jean-Claude Biver uh, leading them now. Uh, I could go on for an entire video about him and why you should care about him, but in short, he's a powerhouse in the watch industry. He's been tied to some of the most prestigious brands that you could ever imagine. Uh, we're talking Holy Trinity brands here. I mean, the guy is a genius. He's been in the industry for his entire career. He knows watches, he gets watches, and he understands. He's actually, if you ever watch interviews with him, he's very honest about how Todd Hoyer screwed stuff up. And he's very humble about it, and he's looking forward to fixing it. And I think that with him as the head, and Todd Hoyer bought out some of the rights to a Seiko movement several years ago, they've kind of made their own. I think there is some direction at Todd Hoyer now where they're gonna to try to make the brand into something special again something that people are actually gonna to wanna to obtain and wanna have in their collection. And I really look forward to seeing what they come up with. 
Um, I'm personally uh, appreciative of the fact that they brought back some of the, uh, the stylish, you know, old school watches like the Monaco. And so I think we're in store for some, you know, great things coming up the road here. So there's my take on why Todd Coyer is really, really hated in the watch community. I would love to hear what you guys think in the watch section. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comment section below. Again, just sharing my opinion. I'm not, this is not my evaluation of the brand itself. Like I said, I think they're doing good things going forward. Although as I've made it clear, I, I'm not a fan of a lot of the watches they made for most of my lifetime, to be honest. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, please let me know in the comment section what I did wrong or what I could do better. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and check out other videos on my channel. I have well over 200 videos on this channel. I've lost count. There's probably gonna be something out there you're gonna to wanna to watch. And uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, my videos aren't coming out as frequently as they used to because I'm busy, but I, I will get back in the swing of things at some point and I'm not going anywhere. So I think I'm just cracking 27,000 subscribers, which holy crap, thank you guys so much. It's a blessing and it's an honor. And I uh, hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Take care and I'll see you guys as soon as I can.